What is up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to answer each one of y'all's questions that you submitted via Instagram. And if you didn't get to submit a question or you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure to click the link down below or just search Fly With Garrett. And if I didn't get to your question, make sure you throw it down in the comments down below and let me know what you guys also wanna see in next week's video. So we've got over 20 questions. It's gonna be probably a longer Q and A. We're gonna indulge in some aviation questions, some personal questions, some the big salary questions, you know, a little bit of everything. So smash the thumbs up button. If you're new here, subscribe and let's get into it. All right, we're starting off with a really good question. How do you find a good mentor if you're just starting to look into flight school options? So if you're not coming from an aviation family, meaning someone else, maybe your father, your mother, your uncle, your grandfather, someone is not a pilot, then this can definitely be tricky to look for guidance. So I would suggest maybe going out to your local airport go out to the flight school, just kind of hang out around the FBO, ask around, and honestly try and look for some CFI, some flight instructors that are out there and ask them the route that they took and see what their opinion is. Maybe some of them just went through the ATP program, maybe some of them went to uh, a four-year degree, or maybe some of them just went out to a local flight school and got all their ratings that way. So. There's so many different avenues that you can take, but yeah, just ask around at your local flight school, ask some CFIs and get their take on it. All right, next question is, how do you like working for the airlines? I believe there's a question later on uh, when I was screenshotting these that compares 135 Life First Airlines, I believe, so I'll get into that. But working for the airlines overall has been phenomenal. It's been a dream of mine. I can't imagine doing anything else at all. And for the most part, I would say 90% of it has been absolutely phenomenal. All right, so this is a question I get all the time, especially from people that aren't in the aviation industry. What's the process like to non-rev? For anyone that's not familiar with the word non-rev, non-revenue passenger, it means, for instance, if I wanted to take like how I commute from Charlotte to JFK, I'm a non-rev passenger. So I actually am not paying for a ticket which is really awesome. A lot of companies here in the United States, in fact, most carriers here in the United States give their employees non-rev benefits. So we essentially just go onto a website that's given via our company and we just sign up for a ticket. We can check loads to see if there are seats open, available in first class economy. And we that's kind of how we plan our vacations as well. Some people go and buy tickets for vacations because they don't want to get stuck with the non-rev life, which for me, I've been very fortunate. Maybe it's just because I have a, a, a lot of flexibility when I go and travel, I can take a flight maybe uh, earlier in that day, later in that day, the day prior, connect through a different city. For me, I have a lot of flexibility, so non-rev life has not been that bad, but we essentially just go and book a ticket online uh, via our company website, and then we show up at the gate, and whenever there's a seat open, the gate agent will call our name, and we go up and get that assigned seat. So it's been pretty good. Uh, there's definitely you know pros and cons when it comes to non-rev travel. If flights cancel and flights fill up, uh, then you know non-rev kind of gets stuck down at the bottom and can tend to get stuck in airports and cities when they don't want to be there. All right, the next question everyone's asking, are you single? Yes, I am still single. Um, what, what, what does everyone say? Living my best life. No, I'm just focusing on myself right now. Uh, I'm trying to grow grow this brand, trying to grow uh, my investments, which I'll talk about later on. I believe there's some questions about that. Uh, grow the real estate side of things and just honestly just grow as a as a person you know i just turned 29 this month and i'm getting older and believe it or not at 29 and i know it seems like i have all this stuff figured out but i really i really don't so it's a it's a day-by-day -day experience and i'm just living and trying to get better every day what was your college major and what what do you think best majors for pilots? So my major was aeronautical science. So I got a bachelor in aeronautical science, which sounds super fancy, but it's just basically getting your licenses uh, and ratings. So yes, a lot of the classes at Amber Riddle and the aeronautical science were tailored towards flying, which was really nice. Like stuff like physics that I really dislike um, and I'm not the biggest fan of math, but physics, especially for some reason, it just didn't click very well until I went to ember and they implemented a lot of aviation into it. So that was really cool. You'd solve a lot of problems around, um, you know, aerodynamics and flying and taking classes like aerodynamics and, and, and stuff like that was a lot of fun at ember -Riddle. So that's the one thing that I, I really like about Riddle was they tailor a lot of stuff around stuff that you're actually interested in, AKA aviation. So uh, what do you think the best major for pilots? I don't think that there is particularly a best major. 
uh, unless maybe if you're you're strictly wanting to go into aviation and maybe not have a backup plan something like what I got a bachelor's in aeronautical science is phenomenal because you take safety classes you take aerodynamics you take performance and like I said a lot of the classes are tailored around aviation stuff in general so yep that's what I would say hey okay, here's a question that probably a lot of people don't know about me but have you ever thought about going 135 slash 91 as a career for anyone that's not familiar 135 and 91 it's like on-demand charter and scheduled charter and I did um, as some of you might know my uncle flies corporate and he flies for a fractional ownership company and when I first started out at the regionals when I was commuting from Charlotte to Philly and I only had 11 days off a month and a lot of uh, sometimes trips were uncommutable. I was having to go the day prior, day after. And I, I almost quit. I almost was like, this is not for me. But, uh, and I called up my uncle and you know, he said he would help me get a job at a fractional and I almost did it. And I'm very thankful and blessed that I did not because I have friends that are in fractional and they absolutely love it. And I think it's a great gig, but I also think it has to fit your lifestyle. And for me, being gone seven days at a time every other week just wasn't what I really wanted to do. And it's great because it's seven on, seven off, and then you have a week off. But for me, I like to know where I'm going at all times. I like to pack for climates. I like to pack uh, knowing exactly where I'm going and what I'm going to do on those overnights. So. That's why 135 part 91 life really isn't for me. But like I said, to each his own, and I think it's a phenomenal thing. My uncle absolutely loves it. He flies a global all over the world. In fact, for people that follow me on Instagram, when I was doing the whole European tour, I believe in September of last year, when I was in Nice in France, the south of France, my uncle was there too. So that was really cool. Actually, when we landed, I saw the global sitting on the ramp and I was like, that's a small world that we just so happen to be in France at the same time. But those are some of the places that he gets to go, which is beautiful. But for me, it just, it didn't suit my lifestyle as much. This next one, is it easy to maintain, or is it easy to maintain an easy sleep schedule? Yes, yes, kind of. For me, I'm kind of a, a, a later in the day type of guy. I, I like to sleep in sometimes. And of course, sometimes with this job, uh, you see me on my stories getting up at 3, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work. And yeah, it sucks, but you get used to it and you learn how to acclimate your sleep schedule around kind of what the what the next trip is. So if I know my next like two or three or four day trip is going to be all early starts, the day or two prior, I'll try and go to bed early so that way I'm accustomed to getting up early as well. How are you enjoying the 737? What are the pros and your cons? I absolutely love it, but before I answer this question, keep in mind, I've only flown this jet, the 737, and the Embraer 145 when it comes to jets. So I don't have a lot of experience. There's tons of people out here in the aviation world with YouTube channels I have. 15 different type ratings and 747s and you name it. They have tons of experience on different aircraft and but the, the pros, uh, coming from the 145, it's a lot faster. The performance is phenomenal. Uh, it's cool flying a bigger airplane for sure. Uh, maybe the, the flight deck's definitely bigger. Um, the capabilities of the aircraft are a lot better. You know, we can shoot Cat 3. Um, VNAV, which is really cool. Auto throttles, That's those are some big pros. Cons. Uh, when comparing maybe to the Airbus, it, the flight deck is a little bit smaller than the Airbus, that's for sure. We don't have a fancy tray table like the Airbus does, and I'm not saying that in a condescending way because I'd love to fly the Airbus one day for sure. Um, but yeah, it's an overall amazing aircraft, and I, I'm super thankful that I was actually, you know, for many of you, you guys know that I wanted to get the Airbus right away, but I'm actually really happy that I got the 737 just because I know one day I will transfer over to the Airbus, but I'm glad that I got to fly this for the time being. Next one is how hard is it owning a dog as a pilot? Tons of questions. I get like probably hundreds of DMs a week just about like when I'm on a trip and they're like, you know, where's Bella? I have amazing people to help take care of Bella, whether that is sharing it with my ex-girlfriend, who I'm very cordial with, we're still friends. Uh, we got the dog together, so sometimes we, we share custody of it, which I know for so many of you probably sounds absolutely insane. Some of the captains I fly with, and they find out that I have a dog, and they're like, who's watching a dog? I might say, oh, this friend, this friend, this friend, or my ex-girlfriend, and they're like, what? 
I know it sounds very weird for some people, but uh, it, it works out just fine. So I tend to like to keep Bella here at my house. So I might have people come stay at the house. But when I finally get based here in Charlotte, my quality of life will become even better and I'll try and pick up just mostly day trips. So I'm only gone for maybe half of the day. I go into an out and back to maybe Charlotte to Houston, Texas and back. And, uh, and then I'll be home with Bella every night. Hardest thing about creating a YouTube channel. Who, um, consistency, one for sure. Two, finding topics all the time. Three, finding your niche. Uh, what exactly you want to do in this space? What kind of, let's see, what what kind of value you truly want to add, and what kind of value can you add to the space and to the niche audience that you're looking for? So, it's definitely it's tough. Do I think it's too late to start a YouTube channel? Absolutely not. YouTube's going to be around decades and decades from now. However, it is harder to grow. Uh, I definitely don't do this for the money. I because. With 100,000 subscribers, you think you make a lot of money, but you really don't at all. Um, I do this to honestly create value. Maybe one of these questions is help someone find a flight school. Boom, mission accomplished. That's You can chalk up my whole YouTube channel, write it up all to that. I help someone find aviation. I help someone find a flight school. Help someone uh, get off their butt and go to the gym today. Something like that, as long as I'm providing value and helping people, that's all that matters at the end of the day. So that's what I would say. The hardest thing about creating a YouTube channel is just making sure you're providing adequate value. When are you going back to regular Twitch stream? If you guys wanna see me streaming on Twitch all throughout you know, the whole C word and the, the P word, uh, when I was stuck at home all through 2020, I, I was streaming every single night and it was so much fun. We grew such a powerful community. It was awesome. We are you know, every single night answering questions like this on the stream, playing uh, Call of Duty, playing Microsoft Flight Sim. So if you guys wanna see that or go follow my Twitch channel, every social platform is Fly with Garrett, so go check it out. I'll link it down in the description down below, but comment if you guys wanna see me start streaming again because I got this amazing, PC and all this amazing, you know, stream set up and then I kind of stopped streaming just because work started picking up again. But I definitely have more time off so I can stream a lot more now. What advice you give to those who are in flight school who are struggling? All right, um, advice to those that are struggling. I promise you, I promise you, you're gonna look back and these are gonna be some of the best days of your life. Going through flight school, going through flight training, being a CFI, it was a grind, it really was. But looking back, like truly some of the best days of my life were, were studying for written and studying for check rides and planning cross countries and then planning for my students cross countries and I, they really were some of the best days of my life. and. For those that are struggling in it right now, just think about the long-term goal. Uh, whether some of you look up to me in the sense of you wanna be in my position, uh, being an airline pilot, maybe that's your end goal, that's great, but I always, I always, it's cool admiring people and wanting to be in their position, but you really need to focus on yourself and what your end goal is and, and, and what you're in this for. And if you got in it to be an airline pilot, and you're in flight school right now, the end is near, I promise, and it comes so fast. And building your flight time, it'll be over before you know it, and you'll be at the airlines. You'll be at that end goal which you were looking for. So I promise it might seem tough right now. Maybe you failed a couple writtens, or you failed a check ride, and you feel like it's you're not cut out for it. Just keep your eye on the prize, keep your eye on that end goal, because it'll be there before you know it. Where can I find pay rates for a variety of airlines in one place, regional and major? Easy, airlinepilotcentral.com. They have, just look up across cargo, regional, major, legacy, they're all there. They have some great information. A lot of the companies update their information on there all the time. The pay rates maybe, maybe vary like a few dollars here and there, but it's all in all phenomenal information. So airlinepilotcentral.com. How many years did you work at the regional before going to a legacy? I worked at a regional for about four and a half years. I interviewed in about three and a half, but because of the big uh, pause, because you guys know why, um, because of the, the pandemic, I feel like you get demonetized for saying stuff like that, But and I've seen it happen, especially the C word, but because of the pandemic, 
Uh, I interviewed, everyone did great. And then they were like, we're actually not hiring. We were the last interview class. And then we kind of went for a year, year and a half on pause. And then they emailed back and said, hey, here's a class date. So about a year and a half later. So three and a half to four and a half years at a regional. Will you order another Cayenne or something else? Ooh, great question. So a lot of you guys probably know because of my Instagram stories, I ordered a Cayenne GTS Coupe, my dream car. I've always wanted a Porsche. I know I have one right now, but that's kind of a bridge car until my car comes in. I did buy that. Uh, but however, my car sat at the port for three months, got completed, sat at the port for three months, waiting on like an extra chip because you know there's a nation, worldwide chip shortage, excuse me. And it was just waiting on like one last microchip. Finally got it, got on a boat. The boat was called Felicity Ace. If you look that up on Google, you can see that it's currently on fire in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, all 22 crew members were evacuated. They went into lifeboats. The Portuguese Navy came and rescued and airlifted them all out. But other than that, the 4,000 vehicles are on, that were on the boat are totaled. There were Volkswagens, Bentleys, and over a thousand Porsches. And one of those was mine. So uh, my plan is to order, yes, another Cayenne GTS Coupe. Uh, I actually will find out here in the next day or two when my allocation slot goes into production, but that is the plan for right now. When can you get back to work from, when can you get to work from Charlotte? Uh, June, June I will be based here in Charlotte, so I'm really excited about that. Next question is, how's it like flying the 737 MAX compared to the original 737? So my company has the 737 NGs, which is this right here, and then we also have the 737 MAX. Uh, I think the 737 MAX is phenomenal, it's sleek, the performance is outstanding, it looks great, uh, no complaints whatsoever. In fact, I suggest you guys go and watch The Downfall of Boeing, the Netflix documentary that just came out, it's great, it's very well put together. Um, but yeah, the, the MAX is awesome, engine start takes forever, but uh, yeah, it's a great aircraft, I love it, it's very sleek and modern. Would you recommend the Envoy PSA cadet programs? I think cadet programs are phenomenal. It's a great way to get your foot in the door, find a mentor at an airline, and they will definitely give you step-by-step -step guidance of what you should do and how you should do it, and maybe check ride guidance. Um, but I think it's a great way to also maybe get paid a little bit. I know some of those cadet programs offer money while you're flight instructing to help maybe your student loans start kicking in, help give you a little extra cash. Next one is how much money do you make from YouTube slash Instagram versus your job as an airline pilot? Great question. I get this all the time. And honestly, right now as a combination, I definitely make more on social media, which I know is hard to believe because the airlines pay a whole lot of money, but first year pay is like probationary pay here at the majors, which is still great. It's uh, it's basically equivalent to what I was making at the left seat at a regional as a captain, but uh, yeah, social media as a combination, you have to throw everything together. Definitely, definitely pays very well and I'm super fortunate for it. And yeah, but as you guys know, airline, comes first. First and foremost, at the end of the day, I'm an airline pilot. If I have to lose social media completely, then so be it. What kind of investments are you making for your future? What does your retirement package look like? So I won't discuss like an individual retirement package at my airline, but investments that I'm making, definitely trying to build, continue to build the real estate portfolio. I'm buying lots of NFTs, which for some people might be very stupid, but, and I'm also very dominant in the crypto space. Uh, a, a large majority of my investments are in crypto. Obviously I'm maxing out my 401k every year, my IRA. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, I'm diversifying. Maybe I'll lean more towards real estate, living off real estate one day. Uh, do I think I'll make it to 65, the mandatory retirement age at the airlines? I don't know, I absolutely love this job, but it's also crazy to imagine me still flying for the airlines 35 years from now. But I might, who knows, I, I love it. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll take each day by day. Would a fast track program to the airlines be better than attending university? Uh, yes and no, it all depends on your end goal. Do you wanna have a backup plan? Do you wanna have a degree? Do you want to just go to ATP and get your ratings as fast as possible to get to the airlines? Hey Bella, as fast as possible to get that seniority number. Um, <laughs> great timing, Bella. But yeah, I, I, to each his own. It just depends on what you're looking for. Really? I'm making a YouTube video right now. You're just coming in here? What do you want? You just ate? You just went potty? 
But yes, I, I believe that going to the airlines and getting there as fast as possible might be the best bet right now. And then maybe taking online classes and getting a degree that way. So fast track program to the airlines as of right now, personal opinion would probably be more the way that I lean and then end up getting my degree later on. Last question, favorite layover city, Charlotte. Obviously, it's home, you know? If I get the layover in Charlotte, that's awesome. So, I hope I answered some of y'all's questions. This is a long video, one of the longest videos I posted. I know it's a lot, probably a whole lot of people didn't make it through, but if you did, if I got you a question, if I helped you at all, please smash the thumbs up button. It helps the channel grow. I still can't believe that we have this in our possession right here. 100,000 subscriber plaque. This is, this is insane. We have to 10X us to get the next plaque. You think we can do it? Let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, peace.